Welcome back to the shop. All right, I bought this little car for my daughter uh, about eight months ago, I think, something like that. Uh, it's been a great car, 2008 Acura RDX. Uh, it's a peppy little car. It's got a turbo all-wheel drive platform uh, made by Honda, of course, Acura. And uh, the car zings. I love driving this little car. It's a lot of fun. Gets uh, okay gas mileage. It's not the best. Um, probably like 18 and 23, I think it's rated or something like that. Um, if you uh, like to get in the turbo a lot, it probably gets worse than that, um, which is my problem. The only thing that we've had go really wrong with it, I mean, it's got little issues here and there. It's an older car. It's got 160 something thousand miles on it. Uh, it's the radiator. The radiator's been leaking for uh, quite a while. We've been doctoring it. Uh, I did put a little stop leak in it um, for the simple fact that we couldn't find a radiator for it. I tried ordering two off of Amazon. I tried my local parts stores. Nobody had them. Even they said they had them on the Amazon uh, stores that I was on. I ordered them and then got messages several days later saying that they didn't have them. They were going to be like six months out. So we've been doctoring this thing up for about six months. Uh, I finally got one from my local O'Reilly's. Uh, I'm not sponsored. There's no sponsorships. Uh, on this channel as of this uh, moment but uh, hey we're always welcoming sponsors if you want to jump aboard and help us out that would be awesome uh, hit that subscribe button hit the like button if you haven't already and there's always that thanks tab if you feel compelled all right we're going to jump in and show you how to replace a radiator in this thing today uh, we finally got our hands on one i haven't got it out of the box yet hopefully it's the right one um, we're tired of putting water in this thing stop leak helped for a little while uh, I'm about to show you where it's leaking and um, we'll go from there. All right, so the top of the tank, of course this is the radiator, the, this top tank, the plastic seals with an O-ring usually and crimps. So it's crimped down and what happens is the O-ring deteriorates over time and it starts leaking through these crimps all the way around. It started over here, right there, and um, I tried to put a little epoxy there. When it first started, it was leaking just right there. And then uh, when I did that, it started leaking like right here. <laughs> these things find the path of least resistance. And so then we put some stop leak in it I don't know, bars or something. I can't remember the brand. And that helped for a little while. And you could see it coming out. The stop leak was turning blue. And it was coming out around the seal here. And you see where it's been leaking back on the um, transmission. It's been blowing back. It's leaking pretty profusely now. Um, and, you know, finally we got a hold of a radiator. It took me forever to get a radiator for this thing at a reasonable price um, these things usually like about a hundred bucks i wasn't paying five six hundred bucks there were some over inflated ones floating around out there i wasn't paying it so basically what we need to do to get this thing out of here we need to get this uh reservoir out of our way we need to get our fans out of the way when you get the radiator drain which we'll do we'll start doing that first there's a pet cock straight down here and i'll show you that in a second you can just open that up and drain the, the tank the radiator probably gonna pop this plastic piece out of the way which is just a it just directs air um, I'll show you that in a minute that's not a big deal it should just it's probably just this clip right here and this thing probably slides right out um, I don't think I'm gonna have any problems with the battery tray get the upper radiator hose off get the fans out should be able to slide them right up shouldn't be too big of a deal on these and if you have a Honda CRV, I would imagine it's very similar to this car. Uh, they're built on the same platform. The only difference uh, that I know of is this is a turbo version of that of the CRV. A little fancier. Um, uh, that's about it, and a lot faster. <laughs> These things uh, are pretty peppy. This car is really fun to drive. I thought about taking it to the local track and, and bracket racing at the drag strip. It's, it's fun to drive. It's got some power. I think this thing's got 240 horsepower or something like that. Um, it's just pretty peppy for a little car. All right. Let me get going here. Get this uh, petcock drain. Let me get a light. 
All right, got the petcock draining. Like I said, it is straight down here. You can see that. This is basically directly below this fan. Just got a big wing nut on it. You just twist it right off. Or open it up. You don't twist it off. You just open it up. I'll take some hose clamp pliers. These things are never in the position where I can do it one-handed. fans out of the way before I worry about that lower one. I'll go ahead and work on this. Getting this overflow tank out. Slides right out. Easy breezy. Easy breezy there, cover girl. Alright. Now, for my next trick, we're going to get these fans out of here. Got four 10 millimeters, and they should slide out. There's going to be a plug though. So I'm going to reach down in here and feel my wiring. So you got a plug on each fan. Let's get these 10 millimeters out of here. Take anything else apart. I'm hanging up on something. Hey, hey, hey. Stay put now. Got a clip or something hanging on with a wiring harness. There it is. There it is. I see it. I see it. Just 
got back from hot rod power tour so i'm still working out of my portable toolbox that i had a lot of tools in my bed of my el camino catch that video go back and look at that you know, like drag racing and stuff you can go look at those videos plenty of auto repair videos even some cooking videos tell you what that little clip holding me up is a pain in the butt i can see it but i can't get my hands on it i got some for it Show you what I'm doing here. There's a clip on this side of this fan that's holding the wiring harness on there. I'm gonna try to push that thing off of there. Let's see if I can't slide this fan out now. It still feels like something holding me. We got another clip on it, I bet you. Yep, right on the dang bottle. So I gotta get this wire harness clip from the bottom. I'm gonna show you. It's right up through there, right here. Just couldn't seem to get it from the top, so I'm gonna slide a uh, tool up in there and pop that clip off the bottom of that fan. I uh, may take that bottom radiator hose off from up here or down here, but I really didn't want to, have to take any of this stuff off, so. I may try it from the top once I get that fan out of there. Right okay. Up there. Now we can see what's going on here. Okay, we got two trans cooler lines, bing, bang, and then radiator hose, boom. And there's a temp sensor or something. Plug that. I'll take my hook tool. Hope you can see that. There's a speed clip type deal there. Pop that up. Hopefully that'll slide right off. Yeah, nope. Maybe I don't have that out enough. thing does not want to pop off of there. Uh, 
There she goes. She was on there. Okay, she was a little stuck. I need to get these clamps off here. Get these trans cooler lines slid back. Okay, so I got all my lines disconnected down there. Got my trans cooler lines off. I hate those pinch clamps. Uh, got my radiator hose off. Sensors unplugged. Now I got to get to these mounts it's holding this radiator in right here so i'm going to attempt to take this panel off i hope this gray piece separates from this we're about to find out so we've got a couple clips here holding it on uh and hopefully that thing will slide out of my way with the clips out of the way i can lift this up enough to get that 10 millimeter right there out and get that off and that's on each side um there's two in that one and one in that one take off and then I should be able to lift this radiator straight out of here. Okay. Um, camera situated. All right. All right, with everything out of the way, everything that I know of is going to hook, should be able to slide this thing up out of the way. I may have to move this. Yeah, let's move it. Well, it looks like we've got a little birdie stuck in down there. We'll remove that little fella. Uh, poor thing probably flew in there when I was driving on the highway or something. Uh, you can see different colors of leakage. It's probably where it's running from the top tank down and set on the bottom. But the bottom tank's probably starting to leak too. I don't know. It was leaking so bad from the from the top tank uh, it's a shame you can't repair these but and there may be some toolage to do that I don't know about it though uh, let's get the other one hopefully they gave us the right one and got a little dirt dauber building a nest on there and things everywhere around this house that's what we call them at least I think that's what they are this radiator looks to be correct I'll have to take this out and screw my Sensor in there. Goes right there. I'm assuming is a temp sensor. So we'll pull that out, screw it in that hole, and we'll pop this bad boy in. I'm sure my daughter will uh, be grateful not to have to fill this thing up with water every time she drives it anymore um, and I won't have to worry about her blowing it up driving around and running, <laughs> running it out of water all right uh, I really didn't want to put a head gasket or freaking an engine in this thing for a stupid radiator it should cost 90 bucks but it ended up costing me 200 um, the times we live in these things are disposable pieces of junk these plastic tank radiators but um, just how they build them these days build them to throw away and not to repair used to be you'd have a radiator shop you'd have a, a radiator uh, built out of brass and copper and metal and steel and aluminum and uh, you could repair them pretty easily I mean the core is still aluminum so you can recycle that and you can recycle the plastic tanks but you can't really repair the plastic tanks at least I don't know of, of how you do it used to be you know, you, every town would have their own little radiator shop or maybe even two or three, depending on the size of your town. They would repair and rebuild radiators and you braze, braze holes that, you know, forming radiators, you'd rot them out. You'd acid dip them and all that stuff, clean them all out and uh, make them like new again. And the radiator that's in my El Camino is that way. It's still the original style radiator. Um, and it functions very well still, 1965. Uh, 
model car. It's 57 years old. Technology is way older than that and uh, still works today in 2022, you know. Um, they just built these because they're lighter, uh, cheaper, but they, uh, they sure do um, fail a whole lot faster than they used to. Um, or maybe not, maybe not. Maybe it's just that we repaired them and kept them, but I don't know. I think they fail a lot faster. Let's get this thing swapped out. All right, I got my sensor swapped out. I put a new O-ring on it. I used the O-ring actually that came out of the plug on the new one or whatever, but we do have to, gotta get these rubber pieces off the bottom, yeah? Put them on the new Rosetta. Actually, it's easier just to set them down. It's easier to set them down in the frame. Just set them down in the frame. Do that instead of putting them on the bottom of your radiator. Right there, and there she is. Oh, yeah, I gotta get that bird out of there. All right, the bird's removed. This up out of the way, him. There she goes. Alright, she's sitting down in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little grease on that and I'm going to put a little bit on the O-ring inside that hose so everything slides in nice and easy and nothing tears. And then we'll put our trans cooler lines back on before I forget. I'm gonna plug that sensor up. Alright. My wife's trying to drive my El Camino. Just pull it in reverse. You can see it on the indicator and it's one click down. Don't you know how to drive an automatic? <laughs> All cars are one click down for reverse. She's never even rode in that thing. She's like, will you move it? I said, just keys in it, just move it yourself. <laughs> all right, she made it. Um, all right, so got the bottom hose on. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on um, go ahead and put these uh, these uh, trans cooler lines on and we'll be done down there and we'll pop this hose back on put our uh, mounts back up top slider fan oh we got slider fans in before we put the hose back on all right we got it all buttoned up down there we'll slide these fans in before I tighten these clamps down, just so I have a little more wiggle room. Tuck that under there for now. Alright, this is the right fan. Plug up this fan while I've got easy access. 
easy access to it. I myself am not worried about the clips on the connector that we took off because it's not going anywhere. It's not getting into anything. Uh, it's just a factory deal. You can put them back if you want or leave them. You know what I am going to check? I'm going to check these trans cooler line fittings before I fire this thing up or go any further. Turn out of that one on this side. So I'm going to pull this fan back out and check the fitting. Something I should have done before I lowered the radiator in, but I forgot. Um, so I've unplugged my fan. And pull it back out. Just for a minute. I'll show you what I'm talking about. These right here. You need to check the fittings here. I was able to tighten that one just a little bit. You don't want those leaking on you, and you always want to make sure your pet cock's tight. That's the drain. So. Go ahead and just make sure it's just tight. I don't want to have to go back in there <laughs> after all this and tighten that up for a leak. All right, let's go back in with the fan. You just go nice and slow so you don't damage your radiator. Well, this radiator is not easy to get, so. It's the hold up. So I'm going to slide back. Come on, man. Come on, man. Fan, we're getting in the way. There we go. She got a little stuttering. A little stubborn. Got to find her. Find the hole. Get in your home. All right, we have a butt hole. had you in there. Why aren't you wanting to go in now? Are you serious? Okay. What in the hell in Georgia is going on here? start with radiator. But I just had them in there. <laughs> oh, the funds of auto mechanics, man. The joys and the pleasures of turning wrenches. I think I know it's 
what's going on. I just don't have it right in the bottom. It sits like, like a tongue and groove type deal. Just wasn't holding the dog daggone mouth right. I guess it's still on. It's right. Get in your daggone screw hole, mofo. Cheap China junk. Chinese fart knocker. There we go. Wow. That does not want to go back on. Don't forget to plug your fans in. Alright, see if we get to oh man. Whew, that was joyful. See how much fun we can have with this one. She's gonna go in like butter. So this one acts like she's greased on up, sliding right in. Don't forget your fan. Okay, mounts are tight. They do jiggling around in the hole like that. We got all our, see, they're rubber mounted, but they do have a little bit of wiggle wiggle. We'll do wiggle wiggle, just like the song, right? My money don't fold, it jiggle jiggles or some crap like that. <laughs> Okay, this is how these little hose clamps are supposed to do. This is a rare occasion that they, they do that right there. They go up onto their lock, and um, basically all you have to do is a 
Well. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it one-handed. You just got to pop it back off of that lot. I didn't catch it on film, but what I did with mine, I just used my pick. It's kind of like a spring-loaded deal. And then you can kind of just position it how you need to. Stuff is not fun two-handed, much less one-handed. I like to go back in the original little grooves that it was already in I find that if I don't put it back in the original spot that it leaks more than uh, if you don't but some people don't agree with me on that but I don't really care because this is my way oh the highway and it's my car so so this just has a slot right there and it slides into that bracket like that let's go back here goes in now got a little clip to go right there one of these clips I don't know which one it is and I can't do it one-handed I need to put these clips back in these holes and these clips like to fall apart, especially when they're old. They take a lot of heat right here and they get brittle. So you can buy them. You can get them new usually at the parts store or at the Honda dealer or whatever. Uh, so we'll pop those back in. All right, we're going to fill this thing up. We'll fill it up and uh, with it out run, without it running and then I'll turn the heat on and let it warm up to full operating temperature with the heat till I feel heat coming out of the vents and then I'd like to bring the RPMs up make sure we don't have any air pockets um, I'll let it heat cycle and then cool all the way back off and double check my coolant level and uh, then go drive it and run the heat and the air conditioner not at the same time of course I like to run the heat first that way the, the coolant's going through the uh, heater core inside the car and the air conditioning the heat unit and then we'll uh, run the air conditioning make sure all the fans are working and all that kind of good stuff and that's about it this is definitely something you can do in your driveway um, check out my other repair videos and check out some drag racing videos if you like even barbecue I've, I've made a bunch of barbecue videos um, check those out if you hadn't hit the subscribe button please do so hit that thumbs up and if you feel like contributing to the channel um, there is a thanks tab down there we highly appreciate you thanks for watching come back and see me again peace